Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to Digging Deep. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We thank you for a time like this. We thank you, Lord Almighty, for giving us the opportunity to learn at your feet. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, adoration in the mighty name of Jesus. My Father, my God, as we have come to learn, Lord Almighty, we ask, Father, that you open our eyes of understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Grant us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank Amen. you, Father, Lord Almighty, because we shall not just be heirs of your word, we shall be doers in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Amen. everlasting Father. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Mm. Amen. Amen. Mm. Praise the Lord. Uh, today oh, we are hallelujah. the topic for digging deep. With long life will I satisfy you. Text is Psalm 91 verse 16. I think we are familiar with that um, um, text of the Bible in time like this. The Lord said, said that with long life will I satisfy you. And that shall be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Today we are going to look into the word of God concerning this topic. Long life will I satisfy you. Because God's plan is not for us to die. God's plan is not for us to die young or live a miserable long life. His plan is not for us to die young or live a miserable long life. That's why he said that he will satisfy us with long life. There's satisfaction with that long life. Long life full of goodness, joy, wholeness, and peace of the Lord. And that shall be a lot in the mighty name of Jesus. He wants us to live long. He wants us to live a long life. That is why he has made provision for our spiritual, physical, mental, emotional balance in the word of God. So in that text, he said that with long life shall I satisfy you. So what do we understand by satisfaction? What is satisfaction? We all know what long life is. We want to be 100, 120, 130 to the lotteries on earth. So when he puts that, he wants to satisfy us with long life. What is satisfaction? The dictionary defines satisfaction as to fulfill the requirement. To fulfill whose requirement? We, are, we all know that we are created by God. And he has a requir requirement for us. We have requirements for us. So satisfaction means to fulfill requirement. Requirement of God for our life. Satisfaction also means to provide, provide sufficiency. To provide sufficiency. He said in this word that it will supply all our needs according to his riches through Christ Jesus. So when you say you are, you, you are living a long life, you want to live a long life with satisfaction, that means it's going to provide for you. You should not lack any good thing. Praise the Lord. Satisfaction also means to fulfill the desire or need to fulfill our desires or need. It also means pleasure obtained from the fulfillment of a desire. Pleasures obtained from the fulfillment of God's desires for us, all that He has created for us to enjoy. When we have the fulfillment of those things, that means we are living a fulfilled, a satisfied life. Praise the Lord. So living a long life is to be fulfilled. Is to fulfill all what God has proposed for us on earth. When you have fulfilled all what God has proposed for you on earth, you are living long life 
with satisfaction. At least you are living your life in satisfaction. And what are the things God proposed for us in life? He said in his books that we should multiply. We should multiply. We should subdue. That's Genesis 128. We should multiply. We should subdue. We should replenish the earth. And we should have dominion. Those are what God, that, those are his fulfillment. What, that's what he needs. He wants us to be in life, to do in life. And when we have done that, when we are doing that, that means we, the, the, the life we are living is satisfying unto him and satisfying unto us. Some people have lived life, long life, without satisfaction. Their lives become miserable. So it's not only about, I want to live to 120, 130 years. Do you want to live a long life with God's satisfaction? I pray that our lives will not be long and miserable in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all know the people that lived long life, lived to very good old age, and they, were, they, they, they lived a long life with satisfaction. We know Father Abraham, we know Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, even Caleb. Praise the Lord. And we all know that the promises of God are yea and amen. Our God does not lie. He's not a man that should lie. No, a son of man that should repent of his word. He has said it and definitely will do it. Despite what is going around, despite the virus, the pandemic that is in the world right now, as children of God, he has promised us that he will satisfy us with long life. And that is our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. But I, like I always say that God promises. God has principles. You do this, you have this. If you don't do it, you don't get this. Praise the Lord. So there are some requirements to fulfill, to fulfill, to have long life and his satisfaction. And that is why this promise is a matter of choice. It's not everyone that have decided to live a life, a long life with satisfaction, no. Because we see a lot of people commit suicide. Some people will overdose in drugs and die. So those people don't have that they don't have it in mind that they, don't, they want to live a long life. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. But for children of God, he has promised us that he will satisfy us with long life. Mm -hmm. That will be a portion in the mighty name of Jesus. So we can make a choice to key into the promise of long life and satisfaction or do otherwise. It depends on each and every one of us. If we came to the promise of long life and satisfaction, it will be to be manifest in our lives. And I pray that that shall be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. As we key into the promise of long life and satisfaction, that shall be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. So there are two major requirements to live a long life and a satisfaction. Let's open our Bibles to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 8. Sorry. Deuteronomy 8, um, verse 3. And it says, And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy father know that he might make thee know that man doeth not live by bread alone, but by the every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doeth man live. That was exactly what Jesus quoted in Luke 4, 4. It says, man shall not live by bread alone. Which means man live by bread but you don't live by bread alone. 
but also by the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So the law of divine health and long life has both the bread and the word. The bread, which is the natural and physical thing, whereas, and, and the word of God, which is the spiritual thing. Praise the Lord. So for us to have long life and satisfaction, we need the bread and we need the word. Praise the Lord. James 2.16. James 2.16. Praise the Lord. James 2.16 says, And one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warned and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doeth it profit? Praise the Lord. It was talking about Someone coming to you and uh, the person being hungry, and you just say, Oh, bless the Lord, God bless you, go away. That you need to give that person what is need, what the body needs, which is food. So food is needful for the body. We need food to survive. Without food, we cannot survive. Praise the Lord. So no one can survive without food or water. The food is for the body to nurture the body which the spirit of God dwells. So we need the food to nourish the body which the spirit of God resides. Praise the Lord. We all know that man is a spirit with a soul and can only live on planet Earth in a body. So we can only live on this planet with our body. And the spirit of the Almighty God dwells inside of us. So it is the relevance of this body on earth that leads us to define physical death as the spirit man separately from the body. The spirit man does not die. So when we die, the spirit man does not die. The spirit man goes to the maker. But the body, which is the house in which the spirit lives, that is what we pray for when we say we want to live long. We want to live long. So it depends on what you do to this physical body on earth. What you put inside of it, what you let, you let it think of, that's when you know that. Okay, you're going to die young, you're going to die when you're old. But I pray that we'll die when we are in our old age in the mighty name of Jesus. And we see our children's children in the mighty name of Jesus. So the body itself is limited. The body is limited. Certain foods and drink are made for the body to live. So that's why we eat. We eat to grow, to nurture the body to grow. Praise the Lord. Although it takes more than right diet to live. Because the Bible said man must not live by bread alone. But notwithstanding, we must feed our bodies with the right food. We need food to live. The topic for this digging deep is with long life will I satisfy it. And like we said earlier, that there are two major things for God, for us to do as human beings to get that promise work in our lives. The bread and the word. We're talking about the bread, which is what we put into our body, our body which the Almighty God dwells inside. Praise the Lord. So it is an abuse of the body to take food or drink that exposes our body to disease. It is an abuse of the body to take food or drink that exposes our body to disease. 
a lot of people will say alcohol. It doesn't matter. The impulse did this at, uh, uh, and all that. Some people will say that well, there's no smoking in the Bible. There's nowhere they say that we should not smoke in the Bible and all sorts of things. But so far, your the Almighty God, the Spirit of God lives inside of you, and the body, your spirit and soul, cannot remain on this earth without the body. And when you expose your body to anything that damages your body, the body which the Almighty God dwells in, when the body is damaged, the spirit exists. Praise the Lord. When you say there's nothing wrong with alcohol, you drink alcohol, you drink alcohol, damaging your body, damaging your system, smoking, damaging your lungs and all that, and you become sick. And won't die. Dying because the spirit can no longer dwell inside such a body. The body that is damaged. The body that cannot do his will on earth. Praise the Lord. It is also an abuse of purpose. Of things we take or expose ourselves to. That lead to diseases. Praise the Lord. Take for instance. When we expose our body. To fornication, when we expose our body to adultery, and then we have HIV, and then we die. The person will say, So, but God said that long life shall we satisfy us? Praise the Lord. So, it depends on what you expose your body to. And when you expose your body to what is not of God, it is an abuse on your body. Praise the Lord. And also, this virus, COVID-19, that is everywhere, the dreadful disease that everybody is trying to, 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 to run from. The government has told us all the things that we need to do. Wash your hands, social distancing, try not to expose yourself to anything that is, just keep yourself. Keep indoors if you can. Praise the Lord. But when you expose yourself to this disease, and people will die, and then you keep saying that, but long life, God said that long life shall I satisfy you. Praise the Lord. We need to know what God says and what God doesn't say. If we expose our body to things that will affect our body, that makes the body sick and we die, it is our responsibility as human beings to be responsible for this body, to be responsible to what we do, what we expose our body to. I pray that Almighty God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. They are telling us social distances is very important. Some people are telling us that we should congregate. For what? When we know that if we do that, it's going to expose us to danger. And when we are in danger and people start dying. They will tell us that there is no God in the church. I pray that the Almighty God will give us wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. At this time, praise the Lord. So when their body is exposed to all these things, the spirit man takes his leave. When the body is badly damaged, it can no longer reside in the body. Romans 12, 1. Romans 12, 1 admonishes us to present our body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service, because in it dwells the Spirit of God. The body also needs to rest to survive. We abuse our body by not resting. God rested, so did Jesus. And that's one of the good things that came out of this lockdown. At least we rested. At least we rested. Even Daddy Gio said that I, I, I rested. Praise the Lord. At least we all rested. Praise the Lord. And I, I, I pray that at the end of it all, none of us, none of us, not even one of us, will be found wanting in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall all survive this pandemic in the mighty name of Jesus. So we're still 
we're talking about our body before we go to the word of God, which needs to be nurtured for us to live this life uh, with satisfaction. And there's also a passage that is so profound in the Bible, which tells us, that's 1 Corinthians 11, 29 to 30. 1 Corinthians 11, 29 to 30. That talks about premature death as a result of unworthy partaking of the Lord's Supper. When we take the Lord's Supper, uh, supper in sin, with dirty hands, it can lead to premature death. That will not be a portion in the mighty name of Jesus. So we've talked about how the, body, how the bread and our body, what we need to do to our body so that we, 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 we um, live a long life, a satisfied long life. Praise the Lord. So the other second thing that I talked about that um, we need to live this life is the word of God. Praise the Lord, the word of God. So number one, walking in the way of the Lord. When we walk in the way of the Lord, we live a long life, a satisfied long life. Let's open our Bibles to Deuteronomy 5.33. Deuteronomy 5.33. Deuteronomy 5, 33 says, Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. So when we walk in the way of the Lord, our lives will be prolonged. Praise the Lord. Let's open our Bible also to Proverbs 3, 1 to 3. Proverbs 3, 1 to 3. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. Praise the Lord. I pray that Almighty God will give us the grace to walk in his ways. In the mighty name of Jesus. Another passage, Proverbs 9.11. Proverbs 9.11. It says, for by me, thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Praise the Lord. I pray that our days shall be multiplied by him. In the mighty name of Jesus, when we walk in his way, praise the Lord. So we also need to fear the, fear the Lord. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When we fear the Lord, our life will be long on earth. Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10. 27. Proverbs 10, 27. Proverbs 10, 27. It says, the fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the year of the wicked shall be shortened. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days. People are no more afraid of God. Even in churches. That is why we see people stealing from the past. That is why we see Workers, ministers, even pastors committing fornication, adultery in the church of God because there's no fear of God. Because our God is a merciful God. 
but we cannot continue in sin because we know that grace abounds. Praise the Lord. We need to fear God so that our days on earth will be lengthened. When you don't fear God, God says that you shouldn't fornicate. You are fornicating, you are committing adultery. And you catch any of these diseases. And then you start running to church. Father, uh, Pastor, please pray for me. Pray for me. You are the cause of your problem. But people from outside will say, ah, and she's a Christian and he's a man of God. Praise the Lord. We will not drag the name of our Lord to the mud in the mighty name of Jesus. We need to fear God so that our days on earth be lengthened. It says, do not pursue evil. Do not pursue evil. Run from evil. Run from unforgiveness. Run from revenge. I will do it for him. I will do it for her. I can never forgive. We are just compounding our problem. Because the person you are not forgiven has maybe forgotten what happened. And you are putting everything in your heart. You are just boiling up. It can lead to hypertension. It can lead to disease. It can lead to cancer. Praise the Lord. We need to know what we are doing as children of God. Praise the Lord. Do not pursue evil. Proverbs 11.19. Proverbs 11.19. It says, whoever is steadfast in righteousness will live. But he who pursue evil will die. He will not die in the mighty name of Jesus. But we must not pursue evil. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Obedience to parents. We must obey our parents. Ephesians 6, Ephesians 6, 1 to 3. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the fourth commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and thou mayest live long on earth. If you want to live long on earth, it, 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 it's up to you. It's a, it's a matter of choice. Obey your parents. I talked about it on Sunday during... Um, uh, workers meeting and I saw um, a Zoom um, chat. Someone was asking that um, what uh, the Bible says that we should not um, um, we should not let the witch live. We should not allow the, uh, the permit the witch to live. That's not your business. If your parents uh, your mom is a witch your own is obey your father and mother. Whatever you need to do to them, do it. God will deal with whoever is a witch or a wizard. The only thing you can do is to pray for them. Because we all know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not about them. It's about the spirit that is behind the witchcraft. Praise the Lord. So, because your parents, your mom is a witch, that means you shouldn't send money to her. It's a cost of one thing. And we shall not be caused in the mighty name of Jesus. We should obey our parents. The Lord will help us. We give us the grace in the mighty name of Jesus. A lot of children don't take to their parents' um, instruction and commandment. They don't. And that's why we see a lot of children doing drugs, committing suicide. Committing suicide. So you can imagine what has been going through the child's mind for a child to commit suicide. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. And that brings me to number five. That parents should teach their children the word of God at home. Don't leave it to the Sunday, uh, the Sunday school teachers or to the teen, teenage teachers or pastors. You must teach your children at home. Praise the Lord. If you read Deuteronomy 11, 19 to 21, 
Deuteronomy 19. Deuteronomy 11, sorry. 11, 19 to 21. Deuteronomy 11, 19 to 21. And it says, And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them, when thou seated in their house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou layest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thy house and upon thy gate, that your days may be multiplied. That's why you need to teach them, that your days may be multiplied. And that the days of your children, praise the Lord. Land which the Lord swear unto thy father to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. Praise the Lord. We must teach our children the way of the Lord. So that's why we see prostitutions, armed robbery, all around. Yahoo, Yahoo. These children are from homes, homes of good people, not only homes of illiterate or the, the People that are not good in the society. I know of children of high and mighty that are in armed robbery, that are doing prostitution. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. And all these things can lead to untimely death. It shall not be a portion in the mighty name of Jesus. And also, we have to, as on the sixth, we have to guard our thoughts. We guard our thoughts. What do you think of? What do you think about? Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs 17, 22. It says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bone. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. We know in the time that we are now with this horrible pandemic, a lot of things are happening to businesses, to jobs, to a lot of, a lot of things are happening, a lot of things. People have, most big companies are folding up, shares gone down, people losing their jobs, companies shutting down and all that. But, if we have God, if we are children of God, we should be able to surmount this period. This man, that man, the owner of Alibaba, I saw one actually that says that. It says, if you are in business this year, your profit should be being alive after this pandemic. And we shall all be alive in the mighty name of Jesus. He said that should be our profit this year. For those that are not, uh, maybe their business has gone down, everything. But because you are alive. Because we are alive. God that did it before can still do it. And he can even do better. Praise the Lord. So we should guard our thoughts. So that this period, we don't have hypertension. We don't have depression. And I pray that we won't have those things in the mighty name of Jesus. And the last but not the least, we should control our tongue. If you want to live long life with satisfaction, we must control our tongue. First Peter 3.10. First Peter 3.10. First Peter 3.10. It says, for whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and the lips from speaking the state. If you love life, if you want to see good days, we have to keep our mouth shut most of the time. Because most of the greatest cause of short life is our tongue. 
if we can if we could have dropped some people's mouth they would have been alive today by people's mouth they have invited so many things into their life some people have invited even armed robbers to their homes because they can't keep their mouth shut. They will be discussing about millions. They know that contract. Hey, they come in. Hey, it's 5.10 million. It's 100 million. Praise the Lord. We must be careful. It's always better to shut up than to talk. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Even talking to where the drivers are, when the books are, I've seen people killed by their cooks thinking they have money in the house and all that because of the word of our mouth, because of what we speak every time to them. People have been in bondage because of their tongue. They talk to someone anyhow, and some people are just wicked, and they won't forgive, and they will do all sorts of things to that person. And I pray that anyone under the bondage of any person, the almighty God will release that person in the mighty name of Jesus. We must be careful of what we say. Job, Job we all know Job, broke the edge of God's protection around him through the word of his mouth and action by sacrificing for fear of evil that might befall his children. We all know the story. Praise the Lord. The Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18.21. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. So we must be careful. Of what we say, where we say, and who we say things to. And the Lord will help us to build our mouth in the mighty name of Jesus. So, in conclusion, bread and word are the only thing that gives life to us. People who sustain on food alone is half living. You need the word of God. If you sustain on food and you don't know God, you are half living. I pray we'll not be half living in the mighty name of Jesus. We were made. We are meant to speak the word as part of our daily diet. We're meant to speak the word of God as part of our daily diet in order to fulfill all of God's will for our life on earth. Our body was made to follow the word of our mouth. We are made to give direction to our body by confession of our mouth. The design of God is for us to use our mouth to, to design and create the world around us. Proverbs 15.4 says, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. And in Genesis 3.22-23, we all know that the tree of life is, seen on, uh, seen, um, is likened to living forever. The tree of life is likened to living forever. So when the tree of life is likened to tree of life, and our tongue is said to be like a tree of life. So we must be careful. And I pray that the Almighty God will help us. So therefore, the length of our days, the length of time our spirit spent in our body has a lot to do with the word of our mouth. Like James 3.10 says, a sheep is controlled by a small ruder. Also, our body is being controlled by the word that proceeds from our tongue. So the word that proceeds should be a positive word to give a positive reaction, a direction. If negative, it gives a negative direction, we can lead to death. And that would not be a portion in the mighty name of Jesus. We all know God's mind concerning us on earth. It is a matter of choice. We are all going to die one day. And no matter how long and satisfying it is, it is insignificant to the time we are going to spend in eternity. So we need to seek eternity. And it is the only, and the only way is through Jesus Christ our Lord. I pray that we all reign with him in eternity in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I think we have some minutes for questions. If anyone has a question, you can ask.
any question let me see if there's any let me see if there's any question just there's no question okay and the back to my pastors good evening sir praise the lord hallelujah we thank god for this evening and may god richly bless you in jesus name i'm sure we have been richly blessed and we are enriched and uh, we have learned so much this evening I just pray that as we look unto Jesus, we will live, we will have life eternal in Jesus' name. And we have been told today that we need both the bread and the word of God. Of course, the word of God is called the bread of life. And for us to live a life that is beneficial, a life that uh, will be well lived, and a life that after living here on that, we still live forever and ever. We need both the bread and the word of God. And I pray that we will not leave the word of God for the bread alone in Jesus' name. Because Jesus even said, man shall not live by bread alone. Praise the Lord. Just one prayer that we should pray before we round up. Let's ask God that the, the word that we have heard this night will be beneficial to us and the world will nourish us body soul and spirit and as we live by the word jesus will sustain us to the very end let's pray in jesus name pray for yourself pray for your neighbors pray for your family members that the word of god that we had tonight the bread of life that we have had tonight will sustain us to eternity even as continually dwell in it in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word that we have had this evening. Thank you for your daughter through the word was sent. Father, we ask Lord Jesus that everyone that have had your word today, Lord, this word, we not stand against them on the day of judgment in Jesus' name. Father, even as we live by bread and your word, our body, our soul, our spirit shall be nourished and we shall be prepared for the eternity to come. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Our service is not complete without our offering. Therefore, I will encourage us to give our offering. Even at a time like this, we need more of God than more of self. Let's package our offering. And we can go to our website www.rccgvtrichapel.org online, click on online giving and give unto the Lord. And as you do so, the Lord Himself will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Also, um, our account, RCGV Chapel account in uh, um, the bank will be scrolled and like i said everything you can get from our website and also on the screen we will scroll our bank account number which is polaris bank uh the details is, is already on the screen as you give your offering the lord will bless you in jesus and let's just lift up our offering whether it's the uh, online offering or the physical one father we thank you for the offering of your children as your children have given tonight lord jesus bless them bountifully and after this lockdown, Lord Jesus, the businesses and the lives of your children shall not be locked down in Jesus' name. Father, that should be a lifting for them to the glory and praise of your name. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are Amen. Praying. Amen. Let somebody shout. Hallelujah. Let's shout the grace Hallelujah. Before. before we start the case, don't forget tomorrow morning, uh, they are reacting unto me, oh Lord, from 8 o'clock. And as you join us, God bless you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So also on Thursday, we'll be having our faith clinic at the same time. And of course, on Sunday, 
by 650 workers meeting and the service proper. Let's share the grace of the fellowship. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. Good night, Pastor. Good night, sir. Good night, everybody. Good night, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Good night, everybody. Good night. God bless you. All. See you on Thursday. Tomorrow. Yes, sir. Tomorrow is a marking on to me. Sir. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> 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 Thank you. 
Hello? Eh? I want to go to another line. Eh? Thank you very much. Well, hello? Hello? Thank you. 